How is it going, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Clams. I'm Will, down here in the Keys, and today we're gonna hit up a couple of the small bridges in the neighborhood, like this one. And underneath here, along all these mangroves, are mangrove snappers. There's a big pile of them right there, just sitting there. And there's another thing that I'm targeting today, and that is grunts. And if you're unfamiliar with grunts, they're a fish that is widely uh, overlooked down here in the Keys. They were big back in the day. People did grunts and grits, but they cook up like a snapper. It's flaky, white, delicious meat. But the problem is you need a very large one to make it worth your while, uh, at least 12, 13 inches. And the reason why they have big heads, small filet. So we're gonna load up on some shrimp. I'm gonna get a small hook, no weight, and we're just gonna throw it out. If we come up with a nice mangrove, obviously we will use that, but I'm after grunts. And I see a pile of them right there. Any luck yet? Small stuff. <laughs> You would think in this current that there would be bigger stuff hanging out, but apparently not. So they seem to all be around this pillar here. Let's put on more weight. That current makes you think you, oh, okay. <laughs> Got a little black grouper. That's pretty cool. Amazing. <laughs> Are you guys ready for this catch? I don't think you're ready. There we go. <laughs> what a catch. Why is it always the small ones that want to eat? <laughs> A bad grunt. He might be coming home. You know what? We're gonna throw him back. And we're gonna see if that uh, if we can keep it up because I mean there's there's fish here. They haven't stopped biting. I switched over to a bucktail, so I'm gonna throw that down and see uh, if we can recreate that. Oh, this might be. Hey, there we go. All right. Is it a monster? Absolutely not. <laughs> but, oh, almost got my finger. Let's see. Let's see what we got. They just got to be 10 inches. So 10 inches total length. We have 11. All right. <clears throat> what do we got? I threw the uh, I threw the 11 incher back. Let's see. This looks this looks like 12. Tell the tape. Let's see. I don't really want to keep anything under 12, so. No, another 11 incher. I don't know. This might end up being a uh, <laughs> barracuda catch and cook. Uh, it is not what we want, though. <laughs> this is an absolute honker of a grunt. Oh, he's barely hooked too. Look at that. That is, that's a giant grunt. <laughs> that's a giant grunt. All right, we're keeping this guy. He's gonna be what we take home. It's what I was after for what I want to do, but it's been difficult catching him, but that, that's a good grunt. There's enough meat on there to do what we want to do. It's a nice fish. So what it feels like 
are little sergeant majors because um, it's a lot of little little tapping not even small mangrove or uh, grunts grunts actually hit pretty hard they just suck up your bait and, and run but this is all little little taps managed to put that right through the mangroves we'll see if we'll get that back <laughs> But yeah, I don't have I don't have high hopes for right here right now because of that. Cur oh no way! Okay, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. You know what? This is about the size of the grunt we want. So I think what I'm gonna do is keep this guy. And we're going to see if we can get a grunt and we'll do side by side. I might throw a couple more here. All right, we're going to dispatch this guy, bleed him, throw him in the cooler and keep fishing and moving. All right, I think if we get stripped on this one, I know I keep saying it, we're going to move, but I think if I get stripped on this one, I'm going to move down, uh, down a key and see if we can find some other spots. But it is, it's instant. You drop down. I mean, they're already on it. I just need, I just need a brazen bigger one to come in. Nope, that's it. All right, we're moving. So one of the things that I noticed, uh, or not that I noticed, I used to do a lot of surf casting when I was up in New York for striper and bluefish. And really what made some people successful over others was perseverance meaning if you were willing to fish a, a spot that went through a complete tide slack and then another tide and now to do that you're talking four four and a half hours same spot because with those changes of the reverse of the tide the incoming the slack the outgoing a lot of things can change so you can go to a spot sit there for 45 minutes and go man it's no fish here fishing's bad nothing here and then people show up after you a couple hours later and smash fish and it's that reason now with that said i don't have the patience anymore so i usually go to a spot try to time it right and uh see what I come up with and if it doesn't happen within 30 minutes I'm, I'm already I don't have the patience I'm on to the next spot <clears throat> so <laughs> because of that I probably land a little bit less than the next person that's willing to bring a lawn chair and fish one spot for like two and a half three hours okay on our next spot I'm under an overpass obviously I'm under an overpass um, but I don't think it's deep enough right there for any of the fish to be. They're probably in the middle there. I also could be running the risk of <laughs> that fish taking it and running around the piling, but let's see if anything bites. If not, we'll keep moving along. So the reason why I was interested to throw something here is that right there. So I don't know. I mean, those are those are big scales, and that is a gill. I'm not sure what somebody had something decent over here. I think something's got our shrimp. Yep. What do we got? Small. Well, something. Hey, it's a grunt. Hey, hey. Not a half bad grunt. That's not too bad. They are, they are so beautiful. These blue, gold and blue stripes. I don't know, you know, hopefully the, the camera picks up on it, but. They are gorgeous. Okay, I think we're gonna keep this guy from here and also keep on moving, but that's two two in the bucket. All right, I'm gonna dispatch this guy and stop messing with him. You know, 
it's just live bait is king and I never want to bring like the bubbler and all the things you need to keep live bait alive <laughs> but your big fish to small fish ratio would be a lot different with live bait the grunts do not care <laughs> the mangrove snappers they come up they look at them I wonder if grunts just have really bad eyesight or something because they're easy to trick so the frustrating part is when you see decent size mangrove snappers <laughs> and they don't bite you know what you're missing out on I'd almost be happier if the water was cloudier so that I couldn't uh, I couldn't see all the good fish I'm missing out on but it really is live bait that's the uh, that's the trick okay we're gonna make the topping so we have our fish on ice I'm gonna let them sit on ice for as long as possible and right now we're gonna make the topping and then we're gonna make a uh, a salsa to put underneath our fish and what we're gonna do with those fish is actually scale them and butterfly them uh, they're small enough that that'll work out kind of nicely so I want the peel of the lemon and lime so I'm trying to get just the peel and not the pith so it's really just yellow there and none of the none of the white pith because the white pith is what can be uh, bitter so with this everything right now we're just going to chop up as small as we possibly can so what I like to do stack a couple julienne at first and in case you don't know that's what julienne is it's little little strips and then you take your julienne turn it sideways chop that into tiny little pieces you could also do this with a lemon zester that would probably be way faster but I I like doing things <laughs> the manual hard way it is a uh, a Zen moment another thing I know when I was working in the restaurant like obviously you could do this with a zester but if you want to improve your your knife skills the only way to do that is to keep practicing and doing things like this so in Italian this is called gremolata a traditional gremolata is made with lemon uh, parsley and garlic and it's usually served on top of uh, veal so we are doing a play on that we'll see how much of the the lime I use because that can tend to be a little bit bitter so at this point you should have the idea everything we're chopping we are chopping very very fine and that's what I want kind of almost see-through there again you could do this with a mandolin and get your slices but what fun would that be real fine now last but not least cilantro and you guessed it we're chopping it real fine probably only need about that much so the best way to chop herbs it looks horrible what you have to do <laughs> but uh, get them nice and tight in a ball and then after that we'll grab that again roll it up and dice through it again we're just gonna keep passing the knife through this until it's all about that size cutting herbs in the wind not the best
Okay, now to this, we're going to add just a little bit of garlic salt, some cracked pepper, and a little bit of olive oil. And that's it. This isn't a sauce or anything like that. It's not, it's not like a chimichurri sauce. But if you want to look up the proper one, look up gremolata. That's the Italian with parsley, garlic, and lemon. This is a play on that, but it's going to be delicious on our fish. Okay, now we're gonna make salsa to go underneath the fish. So I just have a whole tomato here. Uh, this is one small uh, yellow onion. And then I have a couple of dried chilies. I did take the seeds out of those. These aren't particularly hot. They just offer really wonderful flavor. And then uh, garlic. I'm gonna smash these real quick. We have no oil or anything in the pan. And then I'm gonna cut this chili in half. I think I'm gonna leave some of the seeds in, not all of them. Okay, I gave this a taste and it was not hot at all. So we are gonna leave, we're gonna leave it in there, all the seeds. So I want just a little bit of char on the uh, onions. The more the better. And on the tomato like that. I grab these up for a second because I don't they don't need too much more color on them. They're tried. So I'm gonna put them in now. So everything's got a little bit of color on it. You can smell the sweetness of that tomato. And the onions, even with that char, just get sweeter. And even though garlic can get bitter when you burn it, it's okay because all the tomato and everything else is gonna sweeten it up. It's gonna be a nice flavor. So now I'm gonna add in this water. So we're gonna let everything steam until all these onions and everything get pretty soft. And then we're gonna throw it all into a blender. It is hard to explain, but the aroma coming off of this already is just smoky, sweet. It is, it's, it's already, it smells so good. It smells so good. Okay, all of this is going into a blender. I'm gonna scoop it out and put it into here. And then it's coming back to this pan and we're going to finish cooking it after it's blended. But everything's going in. Liquid, everything. Okay, we'll be right back. Blended that on high until everything is nice and smooth like that. Now you could pass that through a strainer, but I kind of want it kind of want it a little bit chunky. So I'm just going to turn this on really low heat. And we're not going to cook it down to anything more. I just want to heat it up and cook off some of the moisture from that tomato. But not much. And then we're going to season this up. Maybe a little salt, a little cumin. We'll give it a taste and see what it needs. So I have here a little bit of cumin. A little bit of garlic salt. And what I have here, it's actually gonna give this a beautiful, beautiful earthy taste, is Mexican oregano. That is delicious. Okay, that's pretty much done. We're gonna turn that off and set this aside. Let's go clean the fish. So I'm just cleaning and focusing on these two fish, the one grunt and the uh, mangrove snapper. So I'm going to scale both. And I know you guys hate that I do it with a fork, but it's what works for me and I, I like it. <laughs> Thank you, uh, John Carter, for the shears. So I'm going to gut and degill these guys. So I'm pretty much just going to show you on one fish because it's going to be the same uh, process on the other fish there. I'm 
to get underneath the gills there. Watch my fingers. Give that a snip. And then I know it's a little dark down here, but the gills are attached there at the top. You give that a snip. Now, should be able to take out gills and guts all together like that. That is the, uh, the air bladder. You can rip that out. And grunts, a lot like uh, black belly rose snappers, have this black lining. Doesn't affect taste. I've cooked with it before, but we'll give them, we'll give them a wash out. Okay, I'm going to do the other fish. We're going to rinse these off, and then I'll butterfly them upstairs where I have a little bit more light. But isn't that cool? Everything all in one shot. I'm going to show you on one, on the grunt, what... Uh, what I have in mind. So we're gonna butterfly it. So we're gonna cut it from the bottom up without going through on this side. And then we're gonna detach the rib bones, take our shears and cut the spine out so that the fish can sit completely flat. So I'm wondering if it's easier to be able to show you guys this might be a little bit hard, but so like you would fillet any fish, Start at the bottom, but we're not going to cut all the way through that tail. Hopefully you can see where I'm cutting there. So we're over the spine now, and the other side. And again, don't want to go all the way through. Just going up to the top. Okay, now... What I'm going to do is cut through those ribs. And then back to filleting like you normally would. There's that one big rib there. There we go. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And then we're going to cut here and here and take out the spine. So it's funny when you fillet fish and you kind of train your hand to do certain things. When you go to butterfly fish, it's completely opposite. <laughs> Just want to make sure we don't go through the top. Might have to cut that with a knife, but let's see if we can do it with the shears. No, oh, you're good. So you cut there, and then just follow all the way down. And there you go. Here's our butterfly grunt. So I'm going to cut up into the head so that it can also sit flat. Just like that. It's like a trout. But this way we can put it, I'm gonna put it in the oven under the broiler and the skin is gonna get crispy. Yeah, this is gonna be good. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the mangrove. Okay, these are gonna go under the broiler on high, probably, uh, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes. We'll give them a check, but a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of garlic salt. Actually do the other side as well. Turn them diagonal in case they, they stick, to the, uh, stick to the rack there. Okay, our grunt is done. That skin didn't get crispy all over, but in the right spots it got crispy. That's pretty good. I'll take it. I think I'm just going to plate the grunt and then I'll eat the, uh, the mangrove snapper on its own. 
So they're either racing <laughs> RC cars or RC planes down the street, but that's that noise you hear that sounds like mosquitoes, if you can hear it, I'm not even sure. Okay, and then we're gonna put a little bit of our gremolata. And then I do want to squeeze just a little lemon on there because there's not a lot of acid anywhere on this dish. And we'll do a couple of cilantro leaves. So there you go, our butterfly grunt. All right, let's dig in. So I don't mind leaving those rib bones or getting eaten up by the noceum, so gotta, you gotta dig in. I also don't mind um, not getting the skin completely crispy, and I'll tell you why. Because I'd rather have perfectly cooked fish than crispy skin. And that's what we have. Yeah, grunt, it's a soft fish, flaky. Let me see if I can get a piece without getting too much sauce on it so that you can see. But it just is, oh, that's a good piece. <laughs> but yeah, it's very light white meat. Let's see, can you see that? It's so similar to snapper. It is really, really nice. The issue with it is, like I said, it has such a big head, small fillet, so you really want to cook them whole. This is another way to cook it whole. Lemon seed. This is another way to cook it whole, but without frying it or something like that. And it makes it a little more accessible. And like I said, you can take out those, uh, those rib bones to make it completely boneless. But I left them in because I didn't want to lose any yield. And I'm a person, I don't mind picking out bones. Not a big deal to me. Let's try a piece of the snapper. Now he was smaller and it's funny their skin acted differently. The snapper skin got really crisp, really fast. I've eaten mangrove on here before. I don't need to tell you. I mean, look at that. Okay, a little bit of sauce, a little bit of the cilantro gremolata. <laughs> Mangro snapper just has a little more flavor to it. It's such a good fish. It's hard. It's hard to beat. But if I was coming up with nothing all day and all I had were grunts, I wouldn't be that upset about it. They are good. They just, they take on whatever flavor you put in them because they don't have much flavor of their own. Where mangrove snapper, you know you're eating mangrove snapper. It is a very distinct taste. Both good, both delicious. All right, so it was a very fun day fishing the creeks of Key West around my neighborhood, and they are creeks, <laughs> um, so that's kind of funny. But uh, not bad to go out there, fish all day, taking the scenery, and then have a little meal like this for myself. And I do have that other fish, I'm just gonna cook that up plain. But uh, I wanted to focus on these two. But yeah, thanks for coming along on the adventure. I'm gonna move inside because the noceums are destroying me right now. And if you don't know what noceums are, they're tiny, tiny little bugs that you would think they have chainsaws for mouths, the way that they bite, they hurt so bad. Uh, all right, guys, thanks a lot for coming on this adventure. I will see you on the next one.